And hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Stuart and welcome to another review by yours truly. And obviously I'm back to do more pro wrestling reviewing. Obviously in this case we're back to talk about WWE Backlash. Obviously this was in Lyon, France. Obviously the first event WWE has done outside the US um, or at least in Europe properly for a long time. Um, not since last year when we've done obviously Clash of the Castle. But this is a really big event. I cannot wait to talk about it. If you want to make sure you don't miss anything from me in the future, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear thoughts on this edition of Backlash. Um, so yeah, so without further ado, let's go and talk about WWE Backlash. Let's go. Yes, let's talk about WWE Backlash. Obviously, as said, said in the introduction, it is the first show in France. It's probably, I can't think of one until med. We never really had that kind of shows in Europe back in the day, so this is kind of a big kind of expansion of kind of had any pay per views to WWE the last couple of years. It's really cool. So obviously, I think it's the first time France has kind of had it. Um, so yes, yeah, so obviously we had that sort of kind of set it apart. Obviously last year it was at uh, Puerto Rico, so it's about a big, and obviously we know how kind of over and had a big crowd was there. So, and to be fair, the France crowd was no, the Leon crowd was no different. To be fair, I mean, good God, the crowd was loud and it was passionate and they loved every minute of the show and I kind of like the idea that basically like, they had to like, tell them to keep the noise down because they were so bloody loud <laughs> I mean Jesus it was mental um, kind of kind of loved that in a sense of, kind of proves a point and um, kind of the crowd here so um, yeah so obviously the, so yeah the French were obviously they're really up for the show and they had, had a good card I mean had a couple of like five was it five matches very kind of like just very focused on these big five matches they've been pushing, not trying to force a match that hasn't been built right. Kind of very, you know, takeover type stuff that I kind of like, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so, um, yes, yeah, so obviously, was going into that it was really fun there in that sense. Um, that so you know, you're going to get probably five pretty solid or decent enough matches, and in a way, we did kind of get, did get that. Um, but, yes, yeah, so obviously. That's when you kind of dive straight into this, basically, and kind of talk about obviously the first match on the card with obviously Randy Orton taking on Kevin, was it teaming with Kevin Owens, I should point out, going against the new bloodline with Sokoa and Tamatanga. Obviously, with the storylines kind of escalated after WrestleMania, after the win, what's it, one wins, lost the WWE Undisputed WWE Championship, whatever they call it now, and kind of lost that. And obviously, he hasn't been back since. And obviously, Sokoa took his opportunity. Um, to take over the bloodline by taking out uh, uh, Tamatanga, kind of take, you know, turning up, joining this new bloodline, taking out Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy. I haven't seen Jimmy since he got attacked just after WrestleMania. And um, yeah, going into this match, it was really kind of like this new bloodline, how intense they are. Because obviously they've been like taking out Jimmy very intensely, like, you know, he's out, you know, they had this uh, set, where was it? They took out was it Kevin Owens, and obviously like, that's your blood, you know, don't see that much WWE, might see more of it in the future. Obviously, it took, was he attacking Randy Orton as well? Obviously, the bit where you know, taking out the kind of him you know, trying to literally try and take out Kevin Owens with the car, literally trying to kill him, like attempted murder. You know, love about wrestling. The best you can try and kill someone, <laughs> but hey, it's not real. You know, it's um, it's um, you don't have to worry about these things. There's no consequences to that kind of stuff. But um, but yeah, so. But yeah, we had that as well, and obviously we had obviously what made this. What I like about the storyline is that, as always, Paul Heyman, the way he's reacting to all of this is just amazing. I love it. I love Paul Heyman kind of like reaction to it. He looks like a man of a hostage situation. He doesn't. He's, he's or a man that's lost control, and he's completely lost control of the bloodline. He hasn't talked to Roman since after WrestleMania. So that's kind of sets up the idea that basically like when Roman turns up, oh my god, all hell is going to break loose. But obviously that's in the future. But obviously build up this match is pretty decent. Um, but when it comes to the match itself, it was um, interesting that they kind of made the decision early on, make it into a street fight. Obviously they all kind of, you know, I guess in full obviously had a finish end, I can understand that now. Obviously it makes more sense. Um, but um, yeah, it was kind of a situation of you know, they start fighting at the, the beginning, but then kind of, you know, it kind of escalated to the knob, can break them up, so Nick Oldis came out and said, this is going to be a street fight, and if it goes, and it's a poor best decision they've made, because as when you do matches like this, you always have big spots and really fun spots, you can see, you obviously had Kevin Owens um, hitting a fox bash on, Tom Tango on the outside, you had 
had uh, was it Sokoa hit a small drop on Randy Orton um, through through another table on the inside. It was like a minute apart or something like that. But um, yeah, so she had the big spot with uh, RKO by Randy Orton on Sokoa on the announce table. It didn't break. I should point out, <laughs> didn't break. Um, so you had that. Obviously, had Kevin Owens later on in the match hitting that kind of brain buster from the top that he does very well with like set up chairs. Again, awesome spot. Kind of love it. But again, what this match is going to be remembered for is Tanga Loa, you know, formerly from, obviously, with, uh, was it, you got Tom Tanga, formerly, you know, Gorillas of Destiny. I should point out, it's freaking awesome that the Gorillas of Destiny in WWE, that's so cool. But, um, yes, yeah, so obviously, he turns up just about, was it Kevin Owens just about to win after hitting that brain buster. He took out the ref, again, very, like, beat for beat, the exact same way Jimmy basically turned on Jay. It's literally, like, you know, pulls out the ref. Beat for beat, it's the exact same thing. So, makes you think that. Um, so obviously did that, obviously hit Randy Orton with the steel chair. And obviously with all this distraction with Kevin Owens, not going on. Obviously it's Cole, was able to hit the Samoan spike. KO, absolutely sold it. Really awesome. He takes him out. He gets the win, and obviously his new bloodline has now got a new member. And now they've got the big win as well. Because obviously the big thing about people not sold about this storyline is obviously Cole has this like, unbelievably bad losing streak which shows that they kind of didn't know what to do with him for a while but like I kind of like the idea that maybe that they're making it a big deal so maybe that's why like yeah you lost but now I've got this like this new purpose I'm going to keep winning I'm going to keep winning with my new crew type situation I kind of like so but yeah it's now escalated interestingly like when we watched Smackdown on was it what Smackdown I thought it's been fascinating to sit there and see how this new kind of the, another member of this new bloodline you know Paul Heyman's basically as I said before sold it and I kind of like the picture of them doing the one like this and Paul Heyman's just looking confused and kind of worried because he's lost complete control of this group Roman's probably left him in charge and it's kind of gone tits up and I kind of wait to see where the story goes great start to the show and it was really really fun and um, yeah can't wait to see where this goes here so obviously after that we obviously had the first title match of the evening we had obviously Bailey defending her newly won WWE Women's Championship. Got against Naomi and Tiffany Stratton. Obviously newly uh, was it called up to the SmackDown roster from NXT. Obviously from NXT Women's Champion which won out. Um, yes, yeah, so obviously this match was kind of like yes, it's maybe not as glamorous as what's going on with like you know Liv Morgan and maybe Kurt, you know what's happening on War basically. But yeah, so I like this kind of storyline with this where Bailey was like. Bailey wants to have a friend have an opportunity at all. And obviously Tiffany Strat Stratton just kind of doing that thing where she's like, no, I want to have a shot as the new blood. And I kind of like that kind of attitude. And I kind of like that kind of storyline. Um, so yeah, so obviously got, but when you think of this match, well, it wasn't exactly excited about this match. But because obviously it's not exactly three names you go, oh, that's going to put on a really good match. Nothing, not in a bad way. It was just, it wasn't really thinking about it. But um, yeah, so going into this one, I was kind of intrigued, obviously Bailey wasn't going to lose the title on my first defence. The best problem with this kind of card in a way, no one's losing their titles on their first defences. Like, you don't go around big moments with man and lose it on the first. Obviously, it was kind of predictable, but in a way, anyway. But, um, yeah, so obviously I knew that, but it was just interesting to see how the match was going to be. Um, as I said before, obviously with the crowd, the crowd was absolutely loving Bailey, loving, uh, was it, Naomi, obviously when she played the girl, the crowd were really into the feel the glow type situation is really awesome um, but yeah I mean and I kind of have to put up like this, this this kind of show had like a house house show energy not in a bad way like really good way like you know because when your house show is very intimate it's very you know kind of like everyone's really up for it because obviously you don't get to see WWE as much so like you know the cut, so you can get away with more stuff and also you know a bit more you know a bit the clouds are a bit more lively and I think that might be one of the reasons because obviously it's new as well, but obviously because, yeah, it just had a house show energy really, so you know it was really good, and I, I think that just kind of it kind of shown in this match, to be fair. So um, but yes, when it comes to the match itself, it was um, yeah, it was, it was I say it was good. Like you know, obviously early on we had a lot of quick pin falls, everyone getting a moment to always get, try and get a quick win. Um, obviously, said for Timothy Stratton looked great in this match, so she didn't come out looking no one kind of almost going to come out looking bad in this match. To be fair. I mean, it's just really, really good there uh, by everyone involved, to be fair. It wasn't exactly like a stand-up match and everyone's like, you know, five-star, but it's just solid and it's good. And that's all you want in a title match, really, to be fair. Um, but yes, yeah, so everyone looked good, but Tiffany Stratton looked 
quite good in the sense that she looked like she belonged. That's kind of what you want when you've just been called up. So you know, that's a good thing. So um, yeah, so she had that. Uh, so she also hit this um, like later on. She had this Alabama, um, Alabama slammer on the uh, both Bailey and Naomi onto the announce table. The way she sets up that is really cool. I like that move. Uh, I think she's a, she's a former gymnast, so she's kind of doing some more interesting, cool stuff. Like that, that's really cool. That I like. Um, obviously, like obviously, but near the end of the match, basically she's trying to do the prettiest moonsault ever. Obviously, wasn't able to hit it. Obviously, we had Naomi and Bailey teaming up to hit a 3D on Timothy Strand. No one mentioned it, but it was a 3D. It was a 3D. Let's be honest, it was 3D. So obviously, that that took her out. So it was like Naomi and ba uh, Bailey, and obviously back and forth. And obviously, the match didn't end with anyone hitting the finishes. It was just, it was just someone was just able to. Just, just enough to get a free count. Put the shoulders down just for a mini second to get the free count. I kind of like this because purely for the fact that um, yeah, no one looks bad. It's in four. Naomi doesn't look bad from just losing from a pinfall because it's obviously it's back and forth. It could have went either way. Um, Timothy uh, Stratton looks great because obviously she showed that she at one point she did feel like she's going to win the title. It's also good. And obviously Bailey looks strong because obviously it shows that. It's going to be tough to defend Natata, but she's still able to get the job done. So, everyone looks good coming out of this match. Um, kind of interesting, because obviously I, I wouldn't surprise me if the title comes back seat with the women's, um, was it Queen of the Win um, kind of tournament that's happening. So, maybe, but I think maybe Naomi, Bailey kind of might have their rivalry, or maybe Tiffany Stratton and Bailey. It's kind of like, yeah, it's up in interesting combinations. And obviously with the draft, more interesting combinations. Obviously a couple of call ups from NXT as well. So I'm intrigued to see where this goes. But yes, again, a solid match, crowd went to it. Um, exactly what you probably want from the kind of, you know, big kind of reveal at the opening. So yeah, it was good. And it really, you know, sold, you know, everyone involved. So happy days. Uh, no one have gone to the next match, but the next match kind of, I must talk about this kind of backstage kind of segment with obviously Jey Uso kind of preparing for his big match against Damian Priest for the World Heavyweight Championship. Um, but obviously we got the thing where the bloodline was walking backstage. If looks can be, you know, tell a thousand words, yes, this is like, you know, a proper, you know, intense look. And obviously we said before, Paul Heyman, I just really look at Jay like, help me, I cannot control this, help me, I need help. So maybe this is kind of seeds, you know, seeds of kind of like him, you know, rejoining this new blood, you know, rejoining the bloodline to try and or a Roman trying to go out at this new bloodline and kind of set up the original bloodline. It's kind of nice, but I always like set up things like that. Because it's just, it's just like, it's the kind of stuff that like us really love, love of storytelling, kind of eat up. Love this stuff. So I'm intrigued to see where this goes. But yeah, I just had to point out before we get to them, the, uh, what's it, second title match of the, the, of the card with obviously Damien Priest defending his newly won uh, WWE World Heavyweight Championship gone against the number one contender, Jay Uso. Yes, you would think this is kind of a match that's kind of set up with the idea that basically, okay, Damien Priest is not the typical you'd think we're champion. Jay Uso has gone for the world title, has been kind of teased and have done it once or twice, but he's still not there yet, I don't think. He's still close though, I think. At some point, he's going to win it. But, uh, but yeah, this is kind of an interesting match because it's based on the idea that. Jay's kind of trying to prove that he's more than just a single star, trying to get that first singles gold. And Damien Priest is trying to kind of prove that he doesn't need the Judgment Day's help to win. And that's kind of the story going in. It was kind of interesting. And I kind of like that going into this. Uh, but as, match, as a match as a whole, it was, again, get very good. Both kind of the Damien Priest and Jay are kind of we doing well here. Um, back and forth, obviously, I like the idea that obviously um, Jay was trying to get under Damien Priest's skin by kind of like, you know, going on a ring, kind of like making, you know, really getting under his skin that he couldn't get, you know, he can't get the job done, trying to play on his temper and his kind of pride, that kind of stuff. But it's kind of a good match at that point, but obviously it's inevitable that at some point the Judgment Day are going to come in and kind of try and intervene, even if Damien Priest didn't want them to. And I kind of like the idea that JD McDonough kind of um, came down um, try to um, take out kind of um, Jay, but you know, got got us, you know, attacked for his trouble. But I kind of like the idea of Damien Priest like sewing him there and it's like, what are you doing here? And I kind of like the, the kind of sowing the seeds of dissension that maybe a situation with now Rhea Ripley not, in, you know, not around. This is where the Judgment Day kind of just falls apart. She was the glue that was keeping it all together, now she's gone. 
uh, for a couple of months, the Judgment Day is going to collapse, and this is maybe start the seeds of it. Who's going to turn on who? That's the question. But yeah, so I like that. But obviously, with this distraction, almost cost him. Because Jay was able to hit a super kick and hit a splash one or one of two they tried to during the match for a near fall. We have back and full shots. Obviously, Jay hit a spear for another near fall. Like, if they pulled the trigger on this and had Jay win, I don't think a lot of people would disagree, and I don't think a lot of people would be, you know, wouldn't be against it. Because obviously, with Jay wins that big one, you know, the big tile going to be huge. It's going to get a big pop. Uh, I don't know when it's going to be, but it's going to be. I mean, he's got to win a big title at some point. Can't keep losing here. But obviously, after obviously, why we hit that near fall. Obviously, Finn Balor came for the crowd. Check. Um, wow. You know, Jay was going to go top here and have a splash. Obviously, attacked him. You know, on top rope. Uh, Dane Priest able to hit one. You know, his, his finisher. You know, chug slam into the kind of sit set out. Kind of like one of his finishes. Near fall here. Basically, back and forth. Kind of hitting their finishes. Not able to get the job done. How is it going to end? Um, I kind of like the idea. Jay hit the um, hit the sp uh, another splash again. With JD McDonough kind of put his foot on the rope to kind of keep his title in the bloodline type situation. Obviously, Jay took out the rest of the Judgment Day, but obviously after this all distraction of Judgment Day, Damien Priest didn't see probably didn't see any of this. Hits an um, his, was it his finisher off the top rope. Um, that was really freaking cool. I kind of like you know proved how Damien Priest is freaking awesome uh, from the top rope. You know, choke slam from the top into the same one. You know, power bomb, whatever it's called, I can't remember exactly what it's called. Yep, obviously gets the win, defends his title, but obviously when Finn Balor was trying to attack Jairzu after the match, Damien Priest stops them, stops him, and kind of, again, before, sets up the big kind of, um, yeah, kind of the big match that we're going to, you know, split of the Judgment Day, as you point out. It's going to be interesting. So, um, yeah, good stuff here. Um, Again, more storyline beats that's going to be interesting. So a lot of groups splitting up. The question is, is there going to be another faction that's going to take over? That's what I would see here. But I, I'm not quite sure. Maybe um, the Fine Testament, maybe. Canon course, maybe. Maybe they can take over a little bit. I don't know. I, don't, I think they're on SmackDown anyway. I'm just talking nonsense now. But yeah, good stuff. Dane Priest looks good here. Jey Uso, again, looks good in the sense that you still can't win it without help. Like without any, he used to, he, when he when he obviously when he was in judge when he was in the bad line, he was able to win. He was able to you know do well. But in this case, he still can't win the big one. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes and when he does win it, it's going to be huge. What title? I don't know. Will it be the World Heavyweight Championship? Maybe. Maybe the Intercontinental Championship. Maybe the US Championship. I don't know. But it's going to be interesting to see where they go with it. So um, yeah, so we'll see next match on another another title match. Maybe not most exciting in the sense that we we're looking forward to, but. Kind of intrigued to see it, was it Kabuki Warriors in Oscar and Kyrie Sane going against uh, Jay Cargo and Bianca Belair for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. In kind of a kind of destruction of damage control, obviously, uh, they lost the WWE Women's Championship to Bailey. Now they have these tag team title tiles again in old WWE. This probably wouldn't have been this match would have been on a pre show of some kind or on the WrestleMania. But I like the way they left it for a big moment here. Um, you know, they could have pulled the trigger, but again, going into it, it's kind of a situation. Storyline, I wasn't exactly really into it, but I like the idea that basically they're trying to build Jay Cargill, Jay Cargill, quite, you know, big, bigger up as this kind of monster, kind of like strong beast of a woman that like you don't want to mess with. And basically like it's going to take something special to kind of take her out. Um, kind of like what well, as you should push someone that's just joined the company. You know, I like the way they're booking it. But yeah, this is kind of what this match was. It was just kind of to show, you know, like Jay Cargill how good she is and kind of help her out to make her look good because she looked good in this match. Again, she showed her power, you know, early on. You know, a lot of power moves, a lot of you know double team moves by obviously Kabuki Warriors and Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair. You know, good stuff there, back and forth. Uh, which obviously there was a moment when the Kabuki Warriors were like, hitting that kind of really cool. Like, the double team was really looking like they're going to win. Um, but basically, this match is going to be remembered for that kind of um, what was it? Uh, that kind of counter from um, Jay Cargill. And I think it was like she tried to caught her in mid air. I think it was, and then kind of lifted her up and then set up for a kind of you know her one her finisher. <laughs> it, it basically it's a it's a show wheel type thing, but it's really freaking cool. So obviously hit that. Yeah, it wasn't the finish though. Um, obviously, I like the way that Bianca Bear hit her finisher on Oscar on uh, Kyrie Sane. And um, 
and obviously Bianca Belair got the pin and got the win, not Jay Cargill, I kind of like. But um, yeah, they're the new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. Um, again, they've still got the problem with the, the women's division. It's like they don't have a tag team division, really. So it's interesting to see who they're going to, you know, go against. But it's a great moment. Jay Cargill's first championship. She's only been in the company a couple of months. So, you know, uh, on the main roster. So she also really going to push her big. Bianca Belair, kind of, the storyline I think they're going to do here is basically going to be a tag team. They're going to win. But then Bianca Belair is going to be fed up with... Jay Cargill getting all the shine, getting all the popularity, everyone talking about her, not about you know Bianca Belair, and it's gonna be Bianca Belair turning on Jay Cargill and set up her first big feud. I think that's where it's gonna go. I mean obviously it just I don't want it to be your jealousy thing, but Bianca Belair has been a face for a long time and I think it's time to get back to kind of NXT roots and start making her a, a you know a heel. Because I think she'll do well in that match, um, yeah, in that kind of environment and you know. She was really good then. So I guess I think that's always going to go. But yeah, good match. Obviously, it doesn't stand out from the other matches, but it didn't need to be. It was short. It, it got the job done. Everyone looked great in it. Um, they needed to look great in it. And it was, yeah, it's a good, fun match. And I really enjoyed it. So obviously, this sets up the main event of the evening. Cody Rhodes defending his newly won undisputed WWE Championship going against AJ Styles. Um, obviously, this is kind of like obviously this is most important when you just have, you know you finally finish the story. What's going to be his kind of like big first feud? And the kind of stats out there that they always go to AJ Styles when a new champion is crowned. Um, always AJ, um, probably because you know you're going to get a decent you know quality from AJ Styles, and um, he's always phen phenomenal of all you know, so it makes sense. But um, yeah, I mean when it comes to the kind of build up to this, it wasn't it was interesting because obviously setting up kind of. Um, it's probably setting up the idea that basically it was AJ and um, LA United still having their feud, so he probably got back to that. But obviously that set up when he obviously beat the way he beat, you know, um, was it LA United to get this opportunity? But I kind of like the idea that basically like they're kind of bringing up their past, they're similar. But obviously AJ, it's basically similar to saying AJ hasn't won a title in a while and he wants that title. And I kind of like that. It was nothing, maybe not story otherwise, isn't the best, but the story was basically can Cody Rhodes handle now he's the champion. He's done all that build to win, you know, get the title. Can he prove that he's worthy of it and can defend it? And obviously AJ Styles is saying he wants that title. So it's just simple storytelling, but it worked. I kind of, I wasn't exactly like, you know, really looking forward to this match in a sense, but um, for the storyline wise, it's done what it, can, what it needs to be, basically. But yeah, I mean, again, for like the French crowd, the Leon crowd loved Cody. Um, kind of um, had a lot of thing with AJ early on. But like, when, um, that the crowd was so, Loud, but basically the camera kept moving. I mean, I don't know if that was a setup, but it might have been. But it kind of, I think it's kind of proving how crazy this crowd is that they can make the you know the kind of cameras move because they're just so excited about this match. Um, so um, yeah, obviously, so that was really cool. But match-wise, if you forget, it was really solid. Really enjoyed this match. You had obviously the nice little callback from Cody doing his kind of Stardust thing, um, kind of the AJ kind of mocked a couple of weeks earlier. I think last week. We had obviously stuff like obviously AJ was working on Cody's arm. We had Cody Rhodes hitting that power bomb on AJ for the announce table again. It was the French announce table, so not Spanish. So if you're doing like wrestling bingo, you're definitely not getting a tip for that one because it's not the Spanish announce table. It was the French announce table. Maybe that's going to be the new job. But you also had that you know big kind of like spot there. I kind of like the idea they both kind of back and forth, like both hitting big moves, both kind of going for it. But the question is, who's going to last? Who's going to hit that one last big move? Or who's going to get that last big moment to kind of win the match? Um, and obviously, we all know who did. Obviously, Cole did win this match. But yeah, it's, for the big kind of spot here was obviously the, the, the um, announce table. But also, the thing when he hit this one, Burning Hammer on Cody Rhodes. And Cody Rhodes just got up at one. It's like a big, kind of like big, kind of like, you know, kind of move by AJ. Normally, we get like a near fall. But like, hey, Cody Rhodes just had his adrenaline and it got up. And obviously, just kind of shocked him. Yeah, we also had this thing where Cody was hit like a Kamala lot. I don't see. Maybe that was a learn out from, you know, Brock Lesnar. We kind of don't talk about it anymore. No one mentioned it on commentary, so the same. But obviously, that, but obviously, how this match ended was basically Cody Rhodes hitting this really super cutter where he had to go all the way top rope, hit, you know, the Cody cutter on AJ, and then that set him up for hitting, you know, the Cody, hitting his finisher, Cody Rhodes 
hitting the crossroads and to get the win and successfully defend his, you know, WWE, undisputed WWE Championship. And to end a kind of very good show and kind of a very good match here. And um, yeah, obviously, I don't, I, again, I think yeah, tw it's like 27 minutes, so it's getting good. Um, is it a match you're going to go back to? Probably not, but obviously it's a good solid start, starting base for Cody's story. That uh, he's got past one hurdle. It'll be interesting to see if it starts in the second match or somebody else goes for the title. Obviously, LA Knight um, at some point. But I don't like the idea of him going to the Saudi Arabia show again to lose again. So maybe not LA Knight, but they've set obviously some you know good, interesting storylines coming here. But I'm not quite sure where the code is going to go from here. Um, what we'll find out on Saturday, on Friday, on SmackDown. AJ probably go back to LA Knight. All this sets up a triple threat. Or maybe a fair forward if he had somebody else. There's opportunities here. There's always the opportunities that I'm intrigued to see where they're going to go. But yeah, Cody gets the win. AJ again, AJ style. So um, it's a show and a very, very good show. And I cannot wait to put them on the wall, it? So um, yeah, so obviously that's WWE uh, Backlash. So that's put my final thoughts on what I think of this show as a whole. So let's go. So yes, that was WWE Backlash. That's put my final thoughts on this show. Um, but yes, obviously said, very short. I really enjoyed the kind of opening matchup. I really enjoyed that kind of um, street fight thing was a good call. I kind of like the idea that basically like, you know, Tambaloa, Tangaloa, and obviously Tamatanga, and um, kind of are now like joins new bloodline. Can't wait to see where that story goes. That was an awesome start. The triple threat for the women's, you know, Bailey, Natalia, and Tiffany Strand. Again, very solid match. Bit, good match to put on after just after the big reveal the opening match really fun Bailey everyone looked kind of strong here everyone looked kind of like you know no one came out looking weak and um, if any, anyone comes out of a match like that it's pretty good so that was really good as well obviously we had the kind of set up more bloodline stuff with obviously the backstage segment with Paul Heyman again Paul Heyman absolutely making the storyline feel really really intense and I kind of love it obviously then you obviously had the uh, was it World Heavyweight Championship match again? Maybe more the storyline was more interesting actually match, but it was a fun match. I kind of like the big spots here. Will Jay finally get that title at some point? Hopefully, it would be nice. Uh, so that was good. So it was a good shot. A good, good match there. Obviously, the section in, in the Judgment Day is on, all but assured here. To be fair, um, I can't wait to see who's gonna be first. Dominic Mysterio gonna, you know, with the Morgan Finn, and obviously the is like Finn Balor. And kind of Jamie J, JD McDonough kind of fed up with you know trying to help him was it uh, Damien Priest and kind of like not getting any, you know love for it so they kind of said we'll screw you mate and let you do let you go all by yourself but the dissension is there and I kind of like it but yeah it's a good match here and obviously I like the ending here so it's good stuff there obviously Jay Cargill and Bianca Belle win the tag team championship match uh, tag team championship it's really cool I like that idea um, give it a title early on Jay Cargill and again, I said for it's going to set up that really cool. I think Bianca Belair is going to turn on Jay Cargill. I think it's kind of inevitable, and that Bianca Belair be a you know a monster heel for a while because she's been a face pretty much since he started. So in the main roster, so I'm intrigued to see you know trying to do NXT kind of like Bianca Belair. We haven't seen that, and it'd be interesting to see where they go with it. Um, but obviously the main event, fun, cool spots, back and forth by two two of the best wrestlers they've got in the company. And um, yeah, really good. Obviously, like the finish with obviously you had to hit, you had to go dig, uh, dig deep to kind of get the win. So you're hitting that big Cody cut and the crossroads to get the win. Um, where it goes, I don't know. But yeah, overall, good show. I like the. I, I wish they did more of these kind of small kind of five or six matches kind of cards. It's fun, more fun to watch when you know you're not watching nearly three to four hours worth of wrestling and you can really enjoy it. It's kind of very old school. You know, just like two hours for, to, to, to TV shows and then three hours for the main shows. And yeah, really love this show. And I'm intrigued to see where they go next. So uh, let me know in the comments below um, what you think of this WWE Backlash front. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, please like, subscribe, and put your comments. And yeah, it's really, um, cannot wait to hear what you guys think of it. Um, so yes, obviously, when it comes to review-wise, I don't know when I'll be back. Um, I've got something in the works of like another review series that I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys at some point. So I look forward to that. Obviously, probably, I probably uh, wrestling wise, I'll probably back for AW Double or Nothing. I think that's the next show. 
obviously they've got the you know Saudi Arabia show that I normally don't watch anyway. If you know me from Just Do Western Podcast, we don't watch that show. So maybe I might push this new project tomorrow and maybe one about them. So you know, so we'd have a video out. So I'll be back soon, so probably won't be back until Money in the Bank when it comes to WWE show. That can be interesting to see where that goes. Who's gonna be, you know, the women's and men's money in the bank winner this year, so it's gonna be interesting. But um, yeah, I'll be back for that. Um, so without further ado, I've been Stuart Vine, and I um, hope you enjoy my view and enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. And I'll be back for more pro wrestling reviews very soon. So until then, have a great rest of your day and it all evening, whenever you're watching this. And see you all guys soon. Okay, bye. -bye.